Meanwhile, reactions have continued to trail the tribunal judgment which upheld the election of Enugu State Governor Peter Mba. Of interest is the decision that the governor did not need to present an NYSC certificate to contest the election. Well, Uchenna uh, Mbeke, a member of Governor Peter Mba's legal team, joins us now from Enugu State. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure one question that our viewers would like very clearly clarified is whether uh, the NYC certificate of uh, the governor of Enugu State, Peter Mba, is truly uh, genuine. Was it handed over to him by the NYSC? What do you make of that uh, judgment that was made in his, uh, I mean, favor? Thank you. The, the judgment of the governorship tribunal Enugu State, that judgment represents the spirit and letters of our law. It decided it as it is. Firstly, it is important to know that election petitions are sui generis. It is in the class of its own. And it is not enough for someone to allege forgery without proof. Once you've stated that a particular certificate was forged, it goes beyond that. You must prove it beyond reasonable doubt to satisfy the court that the particular certificate was forged. That judgment, I must commend the governorship tribunal for their industry, the time invested. It was indeed a very sound judgment. And I totally agree with their reasoning. Judgment. It's interesting to know that uh, you agree with their reasoning. Uh, but then the tribunal in its judgment discountenanced the evidence uh, of some subpoenaed witnesses, uh, including that of the NYC witness. Do you think that actually represents the law? Yes. Um, it is important to state that by the virtue of section 285 subsection 5 of the constitution election petitions are time barred you have time within which to commence you have time within which to conclude now by virtue of paragraph 4 subparagraph 5b of the first schedule to the electoral act 2022 it provides that election petitions must be compulsory. It must be accompanied, one, with the list of witnesses, two, with the position of witnesses, three, with the copies of documents the petitioners intend to rely on. So it is mandatory. The petitioners in this case, when they file the petition, fail to front load the depositions on oath of some witnesses, including that of uh, NYC witness uh, Ibrahim Abdul Mohammed. His statement on oath was not front loaded alongside the petition. And the tribunal relying on the Supreme Court decision in Okamimiko, Supreme Court, which was later affirmed in the judgment of uh, Oba and Vincent, says that a statement on oath which did not accompany the petitions are incompetent and liable to be struck out. So the tribunal indeed discountenance the statement on oath of witnesses who did not accompany the petition. And the reason for the fact that election petition as sui generis and, and it is equally time bad the petitioner has time to file, the respondent equally has time to respond. Right. But that is to say... Okay. Go ahead and land on that point, please. Okay. That is to say that the petitioner, there is no room for hide and seek game. There is no room for you to take the adversary by surprise. So you need to present all you have to afford the respondent the opportunity to also present their witnesses so as to match that of the petitioners. 
All right, thank you very much uh, for laying that out. Uh, I'm not sure you responded to the initial question I asked mm -hmm. you about the veracity, the genuineness of the NYC uh, certificate of Mr. Peter Mba. How genuine is it? Simply, thank I mean, you. is it genuine? And uh, the tribunal ruled that, mm. um, you know, he was qualified to contest uh, for governorship with or without the NYC certificate. Thank you. The first arm of your question, whether the NYC certificate of Dr. Peter Ndubisiba, whether it was forged or not, my attitude to it, which was the decision of the court, is that that certificate is joining. Even the petitioners, including their witnesses, are in agreement. They are in agreement with the respondents. To the extent that one, Peter Ndubisiba was mobilized to do his NYC after his bar part one as a foreign student who obtained his LLB from the University of East London, United Kingdom. So he was mobilized after his bar part one to commence his NYC. Then midway into that NYC, bar part two commenced. He writes, he wrote to NYC for him to defer his service here so as to conclude after his bar part two, that application was granted. And that uh, uh, his youth service was indeed deferred. So upon completion of his bar part two, he applied again in writing for him to commence, for him to continue his service where he stopped. That application was also granted. The area where the petitioner disagreed with the respondent the petitioners are saying that Peter Dubisimba, in the course of his service, stopped attending the compulsory community service. And that they have the record. They also said that they equally have record of people that collected their discharge certificate. That these two records are in their custody. And it is aligned with these two records that they came to the conclusion that the certificate issued to Peter Dubisimba was not from them. It behoves on the petitioners to produce these important records before the tribunal. These two records were not produced. And it is elementary. Elementary principle of law that when you say that a certificate is forged, it behoves on you, one, to present the original certificate and at the same time to present the first certificate, place them side by side so that the tribunal will be convinced as to the extent you are making the allegation that the certificate was forged. No two certificate was presented before the tribunal. And this was the decision of the Supreme Court in Aleka and the state that it is compulsory for a person who is a legend for you to produce the two certificates. Interesting. Okay, now, well, uh, so it is in view of this fact yes. that Uche the now, tribunal I... came okay. to the conclusion. Carry on. I can hear you. Okay, now, you are saying that the tribunal came to a certain conclusion, but then the tribunal also held that uh, Peter Umba was qualified to contest the governorship election in Enugu State with or without NYC certificate. Uh, what do you make of this? Isn't that um, a, uh, a provision for the possibility that he might not even have the certificate in the first place and then just giving him a pass? Now, that is the law as it is. Section 177 Carry on. Section 177 of the Constitution provides the requirement for a person to be qualified to contest for the governorship of a state. And what are the requirements? One, he must be a citizen of Nigeria by birth. Two, he must attain the age of 35 years. Three, 
He must be a member of a political party and he's sponsored by that party. Fourthly, he must fourthly, he must have he must be educated up to at least he must be educated up to at least school certificate or it equivalent. That is the condition. And this was also affirmed by the Supreme Court in Agi and PDP. So there is nowhere where NYC was listed as a qualification. However, Peter Ndubisimba in his form EC9, which is affidavit of personal particulars, listed the documents he intended to rely on as his qualification. He never mentioned NYC. And on the face of form EC9, you are expected to attach the document you've listed. And what was there? His first school living certificate, his LLB degree, and on the other side, both parties, the petitioners and the respondents, are equally in agreement that Peter Ndubisimba is a lawyer. Right. So he's more than qualified. Thank you very much. That point very well made. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on Newsnight uh, tonight. Uh, Uchenna Mbaeke, member of Peter Mbaz's legal team.